Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Dars Highlights from December 16th, 2018. The Dars mainly centered on the importance of calling people to God or into the path, da'wah, and how to do it. And the Shaykh based the Dars on the Surah Taha, Surah 20 of the Quran, where God tells Sayyidina Musa والسلام, to go forth and call the Pharaoh to God. Allah Azza wa Jal, speaking of Sayyidina Musa, says, وَاسْطَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي I have fashioned you for myself. Then after that he says, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَأَخُوكَ بِآيَاتِي Go forth you and your brother with my signs, وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي And do not tire in the remembrance of me. Go both of you unto the Pharaoh. Truly he has rebelled, yet speak unto him gently. قُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا That haply he may remember or have fear. They said, Our Lord, truly we fear that he will deal hastily with us, or that he will transgress us. He said, Fear not, truly I am with you, I hear and I see. In commenting on this verse, the Sheikh said, Da'wah, calling people and inviting people to the path, starts with yourself. You must fix and rectify your lower self. You must do what you have to do with respect to your own soul. If you go out and invite others to the path without permission, you will fall into error. You will do things that displease your Lord. Even authorization from God, from the Sheikh, is what certifies and gives you permission that you have realized this craft, the sun'a was tana'tuka li nafsi. Once you've been fashioned, once you have been made God's sun'a, her by the artisan, a sana, God, He's made you His artisanry, so to speak. Once you've realized this state of being a God's artisanry, and you're in conformity to the divine design, then you have even or permission to go out and call to the path and invite others. With even, with authorization, then you go to others and invite them. The beginning of the path consists of effort and exertion upon yourself until your eyes, your hands, your ears, your mouth, your feet become light, just as described in the hadith of Al-Wali or Hadith Al-Nawafid. Then, when you receive an order from the Shaykh, you must execute it, and that order must be affirmed by the Shaykh, even if it's from God and from the Prophet ﷺ, you pass through the Shaykh's even, the Shaykh's permission. And on the contrary, if the Shaykh orders you, and you have no signs from God and the Prophet ﷺ, he's the one who takes responsibility, and you carry out what he asks of you. The problem is that the murid tends to do what we don't ask them to do, and what we do ask of them, they don't do it. The one we don't ask to do da'wah goes out and invites others to the path. The ones we tell to stop speaking and stop opening their mouths are the ones who speak the most. As for the ones that we go to and say, go do da'wah, go call and invite people to the path, they cling to their corner and they refuse to leave. Allah Azza wa Jal says, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَأَخُوكَ بِآيَاتِي Go, you and your brother, with my signs. Go with my sign. Transmit this light. Make people love it and make people drawn to it. And explain it to others. إِذْهَبَ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Go to the Pharaoh, he has transgressed. The head, the chief, the arch misunbeliever, the arch heretic, Fir'aun, the one who claims lordship for himself. Da'wah is first and foremost addressed to the unbeliever. The submitter, the Muslim today, that's not the first and foremost target of da'wah. It's a polytheist, an unbeliever. One should not be focusing on calling those who in a state of submission, a state of Islam, who already affirm the shahada. Because doing da'wah of that sort, it devolves into debates over minor points of very secondary importance. Instead of bringing people out from the depths of darkness into the light, Da'wah becomes a source of fraction and of argument. The priority, therefore, of inviting others to the path is to do so to the ones who are furthest from Islam. 
Another point that's important to mention is that when Musa and Harun السلام, when they called Fir'aun when they invited him to God uh, the, it was in private, it was not in front of everyone they didn't humiliate him in front of his people this would not be constructive inviting others to the path is thus done and conducted with wisdom they are sent to Fir'aun because he transgressed all the limits Tagha. He called people by force unto unbelief, forcing his people to perdition. This is why Musa and Harun were sent to him specifically. If he were just an ordinary unbeliever or an idol worshipper who doesn't force people to his path, Musa and Harun would not be sent to him specifically. When a Muslim calls another Muslim to the path or does da'wah to another Muslim, that's just advice. It's nasiha, true da'wah is addressed to someone who is outside of Islam. فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا Speak to him gently. Speak to this bloody tyrant softly and gently. If this is how you're told to speak to Fir'aun, what are we to say of the manner in which you should speak to your Muslim brother? Softly, in a way that will touch the heart, with a tone of giving advice or nasiha to someone in error perhaps, this all has to be in private, otherwise you're causing humiliation. That he hopefully may remember or fear God. Speak softly, hopefully that he may remember. Fir'aun knew deep down that he was in error. He knows the truth. When you speak to people about the light, about Nurullah, people already know it. You're not bringing something new to them. The masses, the unbelievers, people know and recognize it by virtue of Alastu bi Rabbikum qalu bala, by virtue of the day of Alastu, when all of humanity affirmed God's Lordship. So when we tell you to invite others to the path, the first question that you ask is where are you yourself vis-a-vis -vis your own quest and realization of divine oneness or Tawheed? Have you attained what you should attain? Then go to your brother. And when you go, don't go alone. Go to Fir'aun with a partner. Idhab anta wa akhuk, go with your brother. Your mirror, the believer, is the mirror of the believer. Al-mu'minu mir'atu akhi, the believer is the mirror of his brother. You go with your brother instead of wasting time on fatwas or minor debates and splintering issues. Instead of delving into matters where more competent people than you are already engaged in the debate. Busy yourself in it with a realm that's open to everyone. Engage in calling people to the light of God. In legal jurisprudence, everything has been ironed out in the greatest detail. So throw yourself or busy yourself to call people to the light of God. Call people to the love of sheikhs to the love of the Prophet ﷺ's family, Ahlul Bayt. Call onto the message of Nur, which is in your heart, which you see with your own eyes. And remember that one person guided through you is greater than everything upon which the sun shines. If you, if you abandon this obligation of inviting others to the path, then, then you just return to where you were. You return to your ghafla, to your state of heedlessness. Your nur, your light, must at some point manifest outwardly. Few fuqara call to the nur of God. The sheikh knows them. He sees their videos on social media. Most of the fuqara do nothing. And those who do something engage in futile debates and disputes among the fuqara. And in our case, go with your brother or go with your partner on dahwa. This means to follow the example of Sayyidina Harun and Sayyidina Musa is to learn from the books of the Sufi tradition to draw from the dead may God bless them and the nur is in your heart you can use the sources of the great books written by the Sufi masters in order to draw links between the Sufi tradition and what's lived in the Kerkariya. However, the nur in your heart is drawn or taken from someone who's alive, from the Sheikh. And those books you take from people who are dead. And you do not abandon 
the living for the dead. You go to Fir'aun with a partner, you call on to Fir'aun with a companion, with a knowledge of the principles of the path and supports and scriptural texts and so on. You speak to those who want to destroy the tariqah softly, the enemies of the path, who oppose it, who criticize the subha, wearing the rosary, criticize the hadra, criticize the darbala, the patched cloak, they criticize even the concept of wayfaring and the way we explain the readings of the divine name in our path. These are the ones that you go to and speak to softly. Instead of refuting these, however, most murids stay silent and prefer to fight with each other or dispute and debate over futile and secondary debates. And so those who insult you in a virulent manner on Facebook, you may block them because you can't respond to them or you think that they're hopeless or you fear that you'll fall into a bad adab with them. That is, you see clearly that you're unable to speak to them with qawlan layyinan, in a soft manner. And at that moment, you know that you're not ready to do da'wah, to call others unto God. And so you have to go back and work on your own state. So the attitude that the shaykh has towards his murids, or when he reproaches them, when he reprimands them and educates them and edifies them and so on, that's one between the shaykh and his disciples. You don't extend that attitude from the disciples outwardly into the realm outside of the tariqah or even towards each other. You speak to others and towards each other with qawlan layyilan. You do not have the right to copy the shaykh in the way he reproaches his murids. Even when a disciple does something that's incorrect, it's not up to you to reproach that murid or to fix that thing. You don't intervene in that murid's relationship with the shaykh. As for those who attack the tariqah, there you don't stay silent, you speak softly. And if you stay silent, know that you're not worthy of being a da'i. You're not worthy of calling on to God, so just go back and do your work. Work on yourself. Sayyidina Musa prays, Rabbi shrahi sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. My Lord, expand my breast and make easy my affair and untie a knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech and appoint for me a helper from among my family, Harun, Aaron, my brother. Through him increase my strength and make him a partner in my affair that we may glorify thee much and remember thee much. Truly thou, thou dost ever see us. This is your goal in wayfaring, in suluk. وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِي An assistant, a partner from my family, a brother. Take a book that was penned by one of the luminaries of Tasawwuf, one of the people of God. That's your wazir, that's your assistant. Help in calling people to the path and present a beautiful face of the order to the public or... Keep silent and hide your face. The Shaykh devotes his entire life to transmitting Nurullah. Whoever wants to help is welcome. But if one is going to slow it, it's better that one stays quiet. Hence the importance of being exemplary and having adab in da'wah. I have fashioned thee for myself. Precedes da'wah. And you should remember when you call people to the path that many people in this order came from states of unbelief and are now accepted in the Divine Presence in the Hadra. And remember that Wajali Wazila Min Ahli when Musa السلام, were, were asks for a partner from his family. The goal of this companionship is to do perpetual remembrance of God. So that we may glorify you much and remember you a lot. Perpetual remembrance of God, after which there is no heedlessness. A dhikr based on sincere love, an abundant remembrance that is motivated by love, which cannot be erased. This is the moment you find a brother who shares this, the same mishkat or the same niche as you. Then the Shaykh narrates the story where Sayyidina Musa والسلام, withdraws into his retreat and leaves Sayyidina Harun in charge of the community and one of his disciples, As-Samiri the Samaritan, builds a golden calf and he tells the community, here is your God and the God of Musa. 
what does the wazir, the partner in calling on to God, Musa's partner, what does he do in that situation? Sayyidina Musa returns angrily to Sayyidina Harun and Sayyidina Musa seizes the beard of his brother. And the brother says, do not seize my beard or my head. I feared that you would say that you've caused division among the children of Israel. Inni khashitu an taqula farraqta bayna bani Israel. I feared, in other words, the partner says, Sayyidina Harun says, I feared that you would accuse me of dividing the people of Israel. Sayyidina Harun himself is a prophet. But he preferred to leave his community of the people united in a state of misguidance and to wait for the return of the Shaykh of Sayyidina Musa salam, who was in a place and had the authority to reprimand and to correct everyone for what they had done. Because Sayyidina Harun realizes that that was not his function, it was not his role. And if he were to do that, if he were to take on that function, he would divide the community and that would have catastrophic consequences. And this he tied to the fact that murids should not be involved in reprimanding each other. They should leave that to the sheikh. And the sheikh tied this theme with criticisms that certain male fuqara leveled against female faqirat who are very active in da'wah online. And they have a lot of videos where they either teach or they, they have uh, uh, chants of the sheikh's diwan and so on. And the Shaykh addressed these criticisms of the Faqirat. And he said, the Faqirat are appropriately dressed. They're performing Sama'a. They're veiled and there's absolutely nothing to critique. They transmit a message of the path. Then he relates a story from Iqad al-Himam, Ibn Ajiba's commentary on the Hikam of Ibn Atallah Sakandari. At the end of that book, there's a story where Bistami meets a woman who's in a, dis- a deplorable state outwardly. She has She's wearing a hijab that's down to her knees and nothing else. And Bistami is outraged by the outfit and she speaks of these very profound realities as soon as she starts speaking and unveils to Bistami his life story and how he arrived at Tawheed. And through that encounter, Abu Yazid al-Bistami repents and returns to God and, and the Shaykh related how this anecdote here you have, one should not criticize someone who's transmitting a message of the path, and instead one should find 70 excuses for one's brother instead of accusing and critiquing. Then he told the male fuqara that da'wah, or calling, inviting people to the path, is practiced in terms of the signs. Ayati, idhaba bi ayati, go with my signs to Fir'aun. You have these signs. The sign is the light that you receive in your heart, that you observe with your eyes. And instead of transmitting this, he tells the male fuqara, you're ashamed and you prefer to hide. As for the women in the tariqah, they've been more active on this front and more successful and more important. And he cited the example of the Zawiyas in Tunisia, which received the tariqah. The tariqah entered into Tunisia through a woman. She did all of the administrative work to make the tariqah official and accepted in the country. And through her, many have entered into the path. And through her, many see Nurullah. The same goes for Ujda, a town in northern Morocco. A woman opened her house and donated it to the tariqah so that it became a gathering place, a majma, for regular majadis. And he said the role of women in this path is not negligible. They've done immense work in the tariqah. And those who criticize them are just unveiling deficiencies within themselves. And the story also, the Shaykh also related the story from Kitab al-Ibriz where there was this woman who was majdub, she was in a state of divine attraction or like a madness almost and uh, she enters into a zawiyah in a state of ecstasy and there were many male disciples. She has torn clothes and part of her uh, awra is uh, displayed and the Shaykh notes how, how people learn so much from this woman who was a masdub at the in that state. He says, as for saying that a woman's voice is a awra, he says, just return to the seerah, return to the sunnah. Look at the ones who received the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. These were singing women celebrating his arrival, singing Talah al-Badru alayna, a song that we, sang, we sing to this day. He said, read the books of the seerah, see if they were veiled and tucked away. Read about how they presented themselves, these women, 
read about how Sayyidah Aisha, who transmitted countless ahadith throughout her life in areas pertaining to relationships, conjugal relations, intimacy, and so on, to men. The problem is we have men with Wahhabi hearts who hope to see God's light, and this is impossible. What is exterior has to be interiorized, and what's interior has to be exteriorized. Then the Sheikh said that da'wah in previous ages, times of uh, the past, was an obligation upon the turuq. People like Ibn Ajiba would go out with drums into the towns, calling people to the path. You can read his biography to see how he did it. He said today it's done largely through social media, and the Sheikh doesn't know how to work how that works. That's a knowledge that you know, O oh, O oh disciples, but you refuse to use it in order to please God, and you prefer to use it for futile ends. The, that work rests on you. In our age. This is how calling people to God occurs. You reprimand the fuqara from disciple to disciple. And if you keep doing that, you'll finally reprimand your shaykh and even call him out. And the shaykh commented on the verses, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَ سَنْدَنْكَ Still in uh, Surah Taha, whoever turns away from my remembrance shall have a miserable life and we shall raise him blind on the day of resurrection. He will say, My Lord, why did you raise me blind when I used to see? And he will say, Thus it is, our signs came to you, but you forgot them. Even so, this day shall you be forgotten. And the Sheikh says, The divine light and nur is the sign. You received it, and yet you look for something else. You speak about other things. You devote yourself to the study of exoteric fiqh and other exoteric sciences, plunging into them. But they pump you with vanity and with pride and self-admiration because this is a teaching or a discourse that everyone in Islam is in agreement on. Instead of speaking about signs that single you out and make you different and may expose you to criticism, you pose as an expert in the law. In order to avoid the feeling of being abased by others, uh, a feeling which will actually generate sincerity for you, for your deeds. The words that you say when you criticize others who are doing da'wah, these words cause harm to the heart. You sleep and you have a good night's sleep, and yet they are unable to have a good night's sleep. So when you commit these kinds of errors, you should repent and repair the harm that you've caused. The Sheikh doesn't critique others like this. He prays for unbelievers to enter into a state of submission, to enter into Islam, for Muslims to become believers who see the light, for believers who see the light to become arifun, knowers of God, and for the arifun to become muhaqqiqun, and realizers, and muhsinun. The Shaykh also related the story about obedience. There was a Shaykh in Fez who used to work in a tannery, the Baq, and the disciple asks to help him. So the Sheikh says, sure, take off your turban and shoes so you can come enter into this uh, place where you step into almost like a hole with dye to work on the leather. And later years passed and the Sheikh died and this, the disciple, to the day of his death, remained with his head uncovered and barefooted. And when he would ask why, he would say, because the Sheikh didn't tell me to take, he told me to take them off, but he never told me to put them on. This uh, this murid, he never said to himself, well, perhaps the sheikh's statement was only applicable when he was helping him with the leather, or perhaps he forgot to tell me to put them back on. These would be logical answers. But the murid gave importance and had ta'zim of the sheikh's words. What are we to say of those murids who are told by the sheikh to wear a pat's cloak at Darbala, and to call others unto God, and yet they hide. What do you have to hide? Our path is in conformity with the way of the awliya of the previous ages. The Sheikh wants people like a Zarruq or a Ghazali who are steeped in studies, outward legal studies, who taste the path and abandon that domain of the zahir, the outward domain, and are melted in the batin, in the esoteric sciences, and their works are based in batin, and even when they speak of the Sharia, they speak of it from a botany perspective because there is an abundance of outward legal 
exoteric sciences and publications, but not enough work is done to revive the inner life. So the faqir who accompanies you in your da'wah, the brother, is a wali of a previous time, an Ibn Ajiba of the past, who left behind texts, texts with proofs that confirm the teachings of the Karkariya order. This is your brother to do da'wah with clear texts of the people of God. And so you can justify and valorize the tariqah by anchoring your calling, your da'wah, in these texts. Many, for instance, deny the possibility of vision of divine light. So one thing one can do is to bring out these texts of the early awliya that prove the visibility of Nurullah. The teachings of light and the interior life are rare in our age. They've almost completely disappeared. They must be revived. This is in contrast to the outward law, where there's a lot of discourse, a lot of discussions of how to pray, how to make wudu, and this and that. But the importance of reviving and revealing the tariqah with clear proof texts and making links between what happens experientially in the order and what the great Sufis of the past used to teach is a very important part of calling people to the path. And you do it with qawlan layinan, softly, even to those who want to harm you. And then Musa and Harun, they, they express fear that the Pharaoh will deal hastily with us. Yafruta alayna, aw an yatra, or that he'll transgress. And then God responds, the Lord responds by saying, Fear not, truly I am with you wherever you are, I hear and I see. You've tasted this divine presence through the sir, and you know that he's with you wherever you are. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد